How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be continuing my Sharks of Summer series. Sharks of Summer is a series I do around here where once a week, at least once, I take a look at a shark movie, and today we have a movie I'm kind of excited to talk about uh, because it's me finishing off a collection. More on that in a little bit. Uh, but anyway, this is Malibu Shark Attack from 2009, directed by David Lister, and stars Peter Wilson, Warren Christie, Shalene Simmons, and Sonia Solomon. In this movie, a little bit of a rambly intro, but I'll try to keep it quick. Uh, this movie, I have the individual release for, but it is also on the Mega Shark Collection. This Mega Shark Collection is an eight film set, and during last year's Sharks of Summer, I started reviewing the movies from here, and one of my goals for this year's Sharks of Summer was to finally finish it. And this movie was the last one I had, so I am now finished reviewing the Mega Shark Collection. That's great. That's one of my goals. What I wanted to do this uh, Sharks of Summer was finish this off, and now I'm finally getting to it. That's really cool. But with endings come new beginnings. And this is actually the very first movie in this Man Eater series. Uh, the Man Eater series was a special line of DVDs that was a collection of creature features. So a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, gargoyles, tigers, and of course sharks. Uh, so I'm finally breaking into this Maneater series, uh, but one reason why I really am glad to finally do that is because they're right here. I have about two-thirds of them. They've been sitting in my background for like months and months and months, and just now I'm finally starting to talk about them. That is very late. Uh, but anyway... The Maneater series has two shark movies, Malibu Shark Attack, which I'm talking about now, but also Shark Swarm. And I do want to get to Shark Swarm. It's part of the Maneater series, and I really want to tackle that. But Shark Swarm is about 2 hours and 45 minutes. It is a shark movie that is almost 3 hours long. I don't know when I'm going to have time for this, but I want to get to it. Whew, it's gonna be a doozy. Anyway, long rambling intro over, back to what we were talking about. Uh, shark, uh, Malibu Shark Attack. In this one, a big old tsunami comes and gets a group of lifeguards stranded in their submerged tower. So the tower's uh, top level is half full of water and that's where they're all stuck from the tsunami. However, the tsunami actually opened a crack in the earth, and out of that crack came a group of supposedly extinct goblin sharks, and they're going to be terrorizing these lifeguards. So, right off the bat, a few major pros with this movie. Lifeguards are pretty cool characters. I mean, they're trained to be disaster ready, and it's cool to see them go out there and, you know, at the beginning they're like saving people. And lifeguards are cool characters. Also, I'm a sucker for submerged sets. That's really cool. When you're up to your waist in water, that's a pretty cool set. And then third, the goblin sharks. That's a pretty rare breed of shark to have in your movie. And these guys are really weird looking. They got a big nose and a big kind of like recessed jaw with a joker smile on it. You see why they're called goblin sharks. Uh, really, really weird looking sharks. And I think that was actually an alternate title for this movie. Uh, but it's got a cool setup and it's got some stuff that I like. However, sadly, this movie is kind of so-so. Like, the characters are kind of so-so. There's not really anyone in here that's super interesting. And the CGI is kind of so-so. Like, it's CGI, it's good enough. But then they have problems with, like, interaction, which leads to a few choppy cuts. 
but overall the whole movie is just kind of so-so and it's got a good setup. It's something that I want to like more. Lifeguards in a flooded set fighting goblin sharks. I really wanted to like this movie a lot more than I did. And I don't want to say it's bad, and you know, if you're a shark movie junkie, this is a really fun way to spend an afternoon, but it's not going to be anybody's favorite shark movie, and it's not going to be the most memorable thing ever, and that's kind of sad. And I can't help but wonder if it had just one big thing going for it. If it had just one super memorable thing, you know, like the goblin sharks they're blind but it's not don't breathe but with sharks I, if the sharks were, had like maybe some sort of superpower maybe that would have worked or if this movie had a good sense of humor which it really doesn't maybe that could have saved it if it was bigger if it was cheesy maybe if it had like a really big star in it that maybe that could have been something I, I don't know it's just a little a little slow to start and there's not really that great of kills in this movie either. It's just kind of a so-so movie, and I, I really wish that they had some big element, some big hook, but nah, it's just kind of a, a pretty standard shark movie, and I wish it was better, but it's just kind of there, you know? So a decent setup, but no, no flash, no flair, you know, and I... I wish there was more to it, but overall, it's okay, you know? Uh, anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and analyze the plot a little bit. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and, you know, get the gist of it down. Um, I'm not going to be talking about the ending, though, so don't worry about that. Anyway, we open up with kind of a fun intro scene. The earth shakes, and then we see a fish swimming through the water, and a shark eats it. But then, the shark itself gets eaten by the special goblin shark. Creative way of showing you our new sharks are tougher, right? Anyway, we then cut to our characters. They're all lifeguards, and they're on a party beach in Malibu. And if you've seen shark movies, you know what a party beach is like. A ton of girls dancing around in their bikinis. Everybody's having fun. You know, stuff like that. And um, we get to meet the lifeguards. You have our main guy, and he's like a good enough guy, but he really has the least to do and the least personality. He's just kind of main guy. And there's this girl. She's only there because she's doing community service. So she's kind of like the outsider character. And she's going to be flirting with the main guy. And that's sort of the thing, you know, romance in this movie. A ton of characters have romance, but you don't ever really care for it. It's like, okay, community service girl is going to be flirting with main guy. Cool, I guess. Don't really care too much. Uh, you get another set of characters. Uh, um, one of the lifeguards, she's a marine biologist, and she's about to get her uh, degree. And she has a fiancé, and that degree will help her give some exposition about the goblin sharks. So there's those two. And then you have the main girl. The main girl, an older, more experienced lifeguard. And one of the other lifeguards is her ex-boyfriend. And they broke up because he wouldn't get serious. And now she's dating a construction worker. And a lot of this movie is that love triangle, and it doesn't really go anywhere, and you never get invested in the first point. You know, you do a love triangle, you usually either have, like, one good option, and the other guy's really bad, and the whole movie you're like, come on, go with the good guy. It's either that, or you have one character that's good for one reason and another character that's good for another reason and you let the audience like pick sides and people go oh I hope it's that one or I hope it's that one but this love triangle to be honest the guys are way too similar the, the, you don't really care which one she goes with and to be honest she starts to fall back in love with her old boyfriend 
primarily just because she he's there. And I think she even has a line saying this, you know? And it's like, oh, well, I left you because you weren't serious, but now there's sharks around me, and you're nearby, maybe I love you again. And the new boyfriend didn't really do anything wrong, you know? He's there, he seems like a nice and capable guy. He's stuck at the construction site, and he's just simply doesn't happen to physically be there even though he's doing his best to try to get over to her and he doesn't make any really bad decisions I kept waiting for the shoe to drop to be like haha your new boyfriend's bad go back to your old one but no they're just two so-so guys and maybe she'll pick one this love triangle doesn't really work uh, but anyway Eventually, the storm starts to come. They get the word, and they work on getting everybody off the beach, and they get everybody off until the roads are too crowded, and they themselves can't leave. So all the lifeguards huddle up in their little lifeguard tower, and the storm hits them. They uh, come through the big wave, and one of them's almost drowned, but they save him. And the community service girl gets a big cut on her leg, and they have to stitch her up. And they eventually find that their lifeguard shack is now surrounded by the goblin sharks. And that's where your marine biologist character lady starts to go, Oh, these are goblin sharks. They're supposed to be extinct. And she, of course, tries to convince them not to kill the goblin sharks. But uh, they point out that they don't want to be eaten. So they have to figure out how to fight them off. The construction site is just a bit of ways. It's uh, far enough to get to that it's hard to get to, but they can still kind of see over there, and the groups kind of look at one another and go, are they safe? What are they doing over there? And there is some survival puzzle elements, like can we swim there? No, we'll never make it. We need a boat or something. Oh, what if we had a flare to save us? Well, all the flares are in the little cabinet below the lifeguard shack and we don't want to swim down there so there is some survival what would you do elements and that is kind of cool uh, and of course after that they have to figure out how to get help how to get out of there how to survive and I guess after that you know analyzing this movie a little bit it just doesn't really have much you know it's like okay some survival elements that's fine the goblin sharks are new that's good flooded sets lifeguards that's all pretty interesting it just you know it's like for characters what they give us is primarily relationship drama but they don't get us invested enough you know for whatever reason I don't really care you know it's like the two boyfriends of the main lady are just, you know, they, it's, I, I, I don't care. Whatever one she wants to go to at the end, I'm fine with. And then it's like, oh, the main guy might be in love with community service girl. It's, it's like, I, I don't care about it. They didn't build up any tension in the relationship. And that's what a lot of this movie is, is like a love triangle that doesn't work. And if that's like all your characters are, and they're not working, then yeah, it's hard to get behind the characters, and I do wish there was someone bigger and special, you know, like, maybe if they got a big star in here, you know, they'd be like, oh, hey, there's that guy, I, I know him and I like him, that's entertaining, or if maybe they just had more of a sense of humor, maybe if things were bigger and goofier and they were making dumb jokes the whole time, I mean, it's a cheesy shark movie, Maybe if there was that, or maybe if the sharks just had some sort of special power, something new. I mean, we talked about Sharktopus last week. Sharktopus was, you know, a bad movie, but it had a really cool creature, which made it entertaining, you know? And overall, this isn't bad. It's technically adequate, and it has a cool setup, a cool type of shark. Again, it's a cool-looking shark. And they say it's blind, but it, it's, again, not don't breathe with sharks. So it's, it, it's cool looking, but other than 
the design, the design doesn't really lead to anything spectacular, you know? And overall, it's one of those movies, it's fine, it just doesn't have anything that makes it shine, that makes it different, that makes it unique. And overall, a totally good way to waste a lazy Saturday afternoon. If you want to sit back, watch a shark movie, you don't have to think too much about and you can just enjoy it. Hey, it's dumb cheesy fun. But I mean, it, good luck remembering it a couple days afterwards. So it's not really bad, just kind of forgettable. And hey, that's, that's not the worst thing ever. At least it wasn't boring. At least I didn't absolutely hate it. I just thought, yeah, it's just kind of so-so. And with the setup, I wish it was better. And you know, I guess at the end of the day, it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my uh, Sharks... No, wait. This should be my Meg A Shark Collection playlist. If you want to see me review every other movie in this pack, they should all be down there on the bottom. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Meg A Shark Collection playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.